Welcome to the Late Show, everybody. I am proud to be your host, Stephen Colbert, and we are live on night four of the Democratic National Convention, where you can already feel it. You can already feel it in the room. You can feel it in the room. Moments ago, Hillary Clinton became the first woman to accept a major party's nomination for president of the United States. Incredible. I mean, however you feel, however you feel about either of the candidates, I got chills, I got goosebumps, Man, you know? As soon as you see it happen, you go, of course, it's so obvious. Why hasn't this happened before? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is huge. This is the biggest breakthrough for women since they won the right to bust ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> also, too long denied. Too long denied. And I gotta say, I just watched. You guys watch the speech? You guys watch oh, the yeah. speech in here? <laughs> it's a great speech. You know, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, but Hillary, of course, was not the only one who made history at this convention. Last night, her VP pick, Tim Kaine, accepted the nomination to become the 48th consecutive white male vice president. The streak continues. <laughs> Way to go. But there were some spoil sports who were determined to ruin even this evening. Bernie supporters, and I'm not making this up, scarfed down beans and went to the convention center as part of a fart in protest. Now, some might question this tactic, but I remind you it is part of a long tradition of political activism. After all, it was Patrick Henry who so famously declared, Give me liberty or pull my finger. And <laughs> now, the theme of the Democratic convention tonight was stronger together. And Nancy Pelosi thrilled the crowd by appealing to their shared values. We Democrats believe that the future of America should be decided by the voices of the voters, not the pocketbooks of the powerful. A government of the many not a government of the money. And that rousing call to get big money out of politics resounded throughout every corner of the Wells Fargo arena. <laughs> From the CNN grill to the Comcast Infinity Live complex. <laughs> now, of course, because this was the Democrats, we heard from every conceivable fringe minority group. I'm a Republican. I knew Ronald Reagan. I worked for Ronald Reagan. Donald Trump, you are no Ronald Reagan. We're Democrats. Why are we cheering Ronald Reagan? I don't care. Woo! <laughs> now, Chelsea Clinton, this is very touching. This is a really beautiful moment. Chelsea Clinton came out and she introduced her mom. But first, they had one of those big budget uh, biographical introductory videos. Hillary Rodham grew up in Park Ridge, Illinois. I'm not saying Hillary is going to win evangelicals, but you'll notice that that was narrated by God. <laughs> that was good. Resonant really voice. Good. So deep. <laughs> Woo. Hillary Rodham was born. In the video, Hillary herself was interviewed, and she told the story of the first time she saw her future husband in law school. I said to the person I was with, who is that? And she said, well, that's Bill Clinton. He's from Arkansas. That's all he ever talks about. And literally at that moment, I heard him say, and not only that, we grow the biggest watermelons in the world. And thus, <laughs> thus began a lifetime of Bill Clinton saying things that would later sound really pervy. <laughs> Really big watermelons. Now, the video was really, it was really lovely, very moving, full of personal anecdotes that reveal a nurturing side of Hillary that we don't often see. Hillary quietly attended Debbie's wedding. And that's just a little sound bite. <laughs> it was actually, it was a really beautiful and moving story. Mm. Mm. And I think it just proves what we've always known about Hillary Clinton, that no matter who you are, she will attend your wedding. <laughs> Then, happy couple. Hey. <laughs> happy, a happy couple. Hey. Mazel tov. Then Hillary made her big entrance, looking every inch a president, or like an angel in a movie who says you can go back to Earth as the family dog if you want. 
I'm not sure what movie that is, but I would watch it. <laughs> now, early on, Secretary Clinton talked about America's core values. Our country's motto is E Pluribus Unum. Great, now everybody's talking Spanish. <laughs> then, talking Spanish. Is that how you say it? Do you say talking Spanish? I'm not sure if I'm talking English right now. <laughs> and then, and this was truly a deeply moving moment, Hillary Clinton made history. And so, my friends, it is with humility, determination, and boundless confidence in America's promise that I accept your nomination for President of the United States. That's history. That's history. And remember, at that moment, somewhere in that room, a Bernie supporter was trying to rip a fart. <laughs> really? Really, 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 really puts the whole thing in perspective when you think about it. Now, Hillary drew a stark line between herself and Donald Trump. I believe in science. And you know she means it because she's wearing a lab coat. <laughs> and Hillary, she had a stern warning for the big banks. Wall Street, corporations, and the super rich are going to start paying their fair share of taxes. And I know they're good for it because they paid me tons when I spoke to them. <laughs> it was a great speech. You got to give that to her. And Hillary Clinton has worked a lifetime to achieve this historic moment. So let's talk about Donald Trump. He, <laughs> he is still in hot water over this little comment from yesterday. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. It was truly a Reagan-esque moment. It reminds me <laughs> of when the Gipper said this. Mr. Gorbachev, Release naked photos of Walter Mondale. And that's how we won in 1984. True story. True story. A lot of people forget that part of the speech. Now, encouraging a hostile foreign government to influence our elections is an unorthodox campaign strategy known in political circles as treason. So. <laughs> With criticism mounting, Trump did something even crazier than making a plea to Russian hackers. He took it back. Clinton campaign says, this is a national security issue. Now, the idea that you've had any American calling for a foreign power to commit espionage yeah, in the U.S. for the purpose of somehow changing an election, I think that we are now in a national security space. Your reaction? You have to be kidding. And when I'm being sarcastic with something, first well, of all, they don't sarcastic? even know. Of course I'm being sarcastic. Oh, sarcasm! <laughs> he was being sarcastic, of course. Now everything he says makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let me tell you. Yeah, I'm really... I'm really... I'm really gonna build a wall on the border, and yeah, Mexico will pay for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm banning all Muslims. That's, a, that's really what I'm gonna do. It's a good idea. Yeah, I'm going to make America great again. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's really what I'm going to do. I just want to say, if Donald Trump says he wasn't conspiring with a foreign government, he was just being sarcastic, I want him to know, I totally believe you. <laughs> Stick around, ladies and gentlemen. This